Delaware's Transit Service, moving forward. New tonight, Wilmington Mayor Mike Prezicki announces today he will not seek a third term, and you may not guess who's considering a run for his seat. Plus, if you or a loved one lives across the Delaware River from the Salem and Hope Creek nuclear generating stations, there's an important event happening this week that you'll want to know about. And a mom is calling foul on the removal of books from a Caesar Rodney School District classroom. More on that. Those stories and much more straight ahead tonight on DETV News. Good evening and welcome to DETV News. I'm Matt Ford. Thanks for being with us today. Making headlines, Wilmington Mayor Mike Prisicki announced this afternoon that he will not seek a third term. Shortly after, Governor John Carney said that he is seriously considering or considering a run to take his place. He says, quote, Tracy and I have lived in Wilmington for 30 years and I care deeply about our city. He continues that while I'm focused on serving as Delaware's governor, it's something I'm seriously considering, end quote. Mayor Przicki has one year left in his second four-year term. In a heartfelt letter to the community, the mayor cited his age and a desire to spend more time with his four small grandchildren as the main reasons for this decision. The 78-year-old former executive director of the Riverfront Development Corporation is credited with leading Wilmington through unparalleled redevelopment. He oversaw the transformation of the Christina Riverfront from an industrial wasteland into one of the most beautiful areas of our city. In his letter, Przicki listed his administration's accomplishments from unparalleled development, some of the best crime statistics in decades, and investment in the city's parks and infrastructure. Saying, quote, no objective observer would ever suggest that things have not dramatically improved under this administration's watch, end quote. Przicki's decision sets up what is sure to be an active campaign season for the job of mayor. In addition, to, in addition to Governor Carney expressing an interest in the role, former Wilmington Treasurer, Finan uh, Treasurer of Finance Velda Potter has thrown her name into the ring as well. In other news, the 66-year-old boyfriend of the woman found dead in Carousel Park in Pike Creek has been charged with her murder. Newcastle County Police say Stephen Heck was detained on Tuesday, a week after 63-year-old Cynthia Amafitano's body was found in a wooded area of Carousel Park. Amafitano's cause of death has not been disclosed by police as of yet. According to police, Amafitano was last seen on the evening of September 23rd at her home. But when she failed to show up for work on September 25th, police were called to the house in the 3400 block of Birch Circle. Her obituary said that she was a preschool teacher at Concord Preschool for more than 26 years. Heck became a person of interest and on Tuesday, police got a warrant for his arrest. He has been charged with first degree murder. Services are being held Thursday at Pagano Funeral Home in Garnet Valley, Pennsylvania. And in other news, a Delaware teen is charged with the murder of a missing Maryland man. State police arrested 17-year-old Shakir Bowen for the murder of a Maryland man that had been reported missing on September 22nd. The 41-year-old man, David Thomas Jr., had borrowed a car from his family in Kent County on September 15th, but never returned it and no one could locate or contact Thomas. A week after he was reported missing, his remains were found in a ditch located in Meadowbrook Acres. 17-year-old Bowen allegedly shot and killed Thomas. Bowen is charged with first-degree murder along with other felonies. He was arraigned and committed to the Department of Corrections on a half-million-dollar cash bond. If you or someone you know has additional information about this case, you are urged to contact Newcastle County Police or Delaware Crime Stoppers. And free potassium iodine tablets are set up to be distributed to those who live or work within a 10 mile radius of the Salem and Hope Creek nuclear generating stations in Salem County, New Jersey, also known as the Emergency Planning Zone. The effort is a partnership between the Delaware Emergency Management Agency and the Delaware Division of Public Health. The free tablet distribution will take place on Thursday, October 5th from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. at the Townsend Fire Company. 
Residents with home or business addresses within the emergency planning zone are eligible to receive the tablets. To do so, recipients must bring a photo ID, such as a driver's license, proof of residency, such as a utility bill, or proof of employment within the zone when they go to pick up to when they go to the pickup location. Now, if you have expired tablets, you can bring those to the distribution center and exchange them for new ones. Potassium iodine does not protect against external radiation, but it can help protect the thyroid gland from ingested or inhaled radioactive iodine that could be released in a radiation emergency. The tablet is one of the prevent preventative measures outlined in Delaware's emergency plans developed for use in a nuclear incident. A Magnolia mother is calling the removal of a series of animated books from her children's school a book ban and has collected nearly 2,000 signatures to bring the popular series back to the students. Jennifer Anatok plans to submit the signatures to Caesar Rodney High School Board later this month and ask they bring back the series known as manga. I do see this as a book ban because the very definition of ban is a prohibition of something, right? And what we're pro prohibiting are the books, and that makes it a book ban. The school district is calling the incident a misunderstanding and said a series of, quote, poor choices on the part of a teacher led to the book's removal. Antoc's two children attended the Magnolia Middle School and were members of a club that met to read and discuss the Japanese cartoons. Nearly 80 students, many ages 13 and 14, were members of the club, said Antoc. The club has received district recognition and last year a $1,000 grant to buy more of these books. Parents signed permission slips allowing their children to participate in the club, but starting this school year after receiving two complaints that an inappropriate manga video was shown during class time, the school instituted a new policy wherein no books rated for teen were allowed. District officials said the teacher removed all of the books and disbanded the club, a move they say was premature as the school had planned to review all of the manga books for possible inclusion in the club. The teacher did not immediately respond to an email from DETV. Antox says the issue was mishandled and that Caesar Rodney school officials need to create a district-wide policy on the removal of materials. The school board next meets on October 17th. I hope the school district makes the right choice for the kids and for the teacher. I, I think they were very heavy handed and I think compromises can be made. For the second consecutive year, Christiana Care has earned a gold level Joy in Medicine Recognition Award from the American Medi Medical Association. One of only 10 health systems nationwide to achieve gold level, Christiana Care received recognition for its commitment to the well being of the clinical care team members. Christiana Care has instituted several programs to recognize and help caregivers deal with the stresses of the job. Last year, the Center for Work-Life Wellbeing launched a training program to help organizational leaders build skills to identify and support colleagues impacted by stress. The hospital system also instituted a peer support program known as Care for the Caregiver, which offers confidential peer support and group support following stressful events at work. The national program was started in 2019 when burnout rates among caregivers began to spike dramatically during COVID-19. While the worst of COVID has passed, lingering impacts still remain. And the University of Delaware is receiving an additional $10 million in federal funds to expand research into biological medical products announced the first state's congressional delega delegation recently. The money will be used to build on new facility on the university's star campus in Newark, site of national research into medical problems such as COVID. The center has received more than $150 million in federal funding so far and has become a first class research campus where a once shuttered auto assembly plant stood, said Senator Tom Carper in a press release. AAA is warning us, watch out for lovesick deer on the roads. The travel giant issued a reminder today that October through December is deer mating season. That means more active and distracted animals who dart onto roadways. A deer vehicle collision is no laughing matter. Striking such a large animal can be dangerous and expensive. Though the vast majority of accidents do not involve serious injuries, AAA reported that almost 2,000 people died in a deer vehicle collision from 2012 to 2021, including two Delawareans. That's a 60% increase over previous years. 
The cost of such accidents is also on the rise. AAA estimates that the average price tag for hitting a deer is more than 5,000 bucks, driven up by technology and new cars. AAA offers tips to avoid an accident, including to stay in your lane and hit the brakes if a deer runs into the road, as swerving the deer confuses the animal. Also, they say honk your horn in one long horn blast and be especially watchful for, an, uh, for amorous animals in early morning and evening hours. And a new segment of the Jack Markell Trail opened this week in Newcastle. It's the first of five planned extensions. The first section of the Commons Boulevard Trail extends 0.8 miles, connecting the Jack Markell Trail from the tunnel under I-295 to the Social Security office on Creekwood Road near Newcastle. Nonprofit and advocacy group Delaware Greenways has partially funded and publicly supported the trail's opening for over five years. Plans for the Commons Boulevard Trail will eventually connect Wilmington to Christiana Care with over a two mile paved trail meant for easy cycling and pedestrian access. The next steps for the trail will be to connect the Creekwood Road trailhead to the nearby Route 141. Specific timelines for this plan are unknown as of right now. The opening was celebrated with a bike ride with members of the Bike Delaware Cycling Group who have advocated for a comprehensive trail network in Delaware as a method of suppressing traffic fatalities. Delaware teachers in search for their caffeine fix can find it for free tomorrow at Duncan. Thursday, October 5th, educators can grab free medium hot or iced coffee to mark World Teachers Day. The deal is only available inside stores with nearly 70 to choose from here in the first state. Just show up with a valid school or work ID upon ordering. No other purchase is necessary, but the offer does not extend to cold brew or nitro cold brew options, so heads up there. One cup of coffee is available per teacher. And that's going to do it for tonight's edition of DETV News. If you're playing the Powerball tonight in hopes of winning that $1.2 billion prize, well, may the odds be in your favor. If you didn't buy a ticket, remember you have until 9.45 this evening to do so. Be sure to follow us across all our social media platforms, and for a look at what's happening around Delaware, check out our website, that's DETVCH.com. With tonight's news, I'm Matt Ford. Join Lauren Wilson tomorrow when DETV News continues. We'll see you then.